really, I just want to introduce you guys a little bit to our business. Uh, I've been doing digital marketing now for about two decades, 25 mm -hmm. years. And uh, we have a company that is about building the business from the core, from the foundation. And we use what we call an accelerated growth map. And I've kind of created this for moving companies specifically. Three, three pronged approach, drive leads, maximize those conversions and optimize the results. And we start with organic, we have paid ads, and then you have your own database. We have a maximized conversion, which is your website, your reputation, as well as the automation, which is that piece that we're going to talk about today, optimizing those results. So what's the total spend, what's your average cost per lead and return on investment. So one of those are some of our KPIs when we deliver reports. So right now it's automation and uh, another area that I keep having to remind folks, um, especially in the moving industry that I've found that uh, they all want the the quick lead and we are not that. We are, again, the foundation of the company. So we have a marketing, it's a typical marketing rule of seven, it takes an average of seven interactions with your brand before anybody is going to make a purchase or call you or anything. They got to see you seven times. And nowadays in 2024, coming up 2025, now we're saying 10 to 15 interactions and they could be micro interactions. They see an ad, they get a postcard, they visit your site, they see you on social media. All of those are just interactions that they've had with you. This is where automation comes in because it's it can be almost impossible to, to get all that, even if you have a salesperson. And so what we're going to do today is I'm going to talk about automating your moving business, the marketing side of it. We're going to talk about how we can help with that, not we, but how automation helps with that for unconverted leads. The phone call that hangs up, fills out the form, they disappear. And so how can automation help convert those? The ideal outcome of marketing automation, like what do we want to see at the end and integrating it? What are some ideas? And I'm going to go into specific examples of how we can integrate marketing automation, your everyday operation, using the tools that most likely you already are using right now. And then any Q&A, happy to answer questions. And I've got some freebies for you. Now, if you can, if you're driving, don't listen to this. <laughs> don't, don't turn off your cell phone, don't turn off your car. But again, I get moving companies. I understand a phone call comes in, you got to pick it up. I get it. But for now, if we could just focus for a little bit, trying to do this in 30 minutes. If um, this is the time we're going to Hopefully you'll learn something and take away that you can implement internally and save you some time as well as help with those unconverted leads. So if you want, come to this website. Now, this is this is my big annual workbook. I'm going to have a big uh, planning for 2025 in December and then another one in January. Yep. But this is the, the big workbook plan that I recommend. Download that. It's free. Just click on it. It's a PDF. Don't, you know, there's no sign up for anything like that. So just so we can't click, click, it. click it from Lee. Is it in the chat? Yeah. Let me actually throw that in there for you, which I have that here. There it is. Throw that in the chat for you. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Chat. And then another one is a worksheet. So this one, if you're not quite sure of what your, oops, that's not it. Yeah, that's it. Worksheet. This is a tool. If you're not sure how many leads you need, how much you should be spending on marketing, it's got all kinds of good data in there to help you come up with an ROI, typical spends, spreading out between digital marketing, direct mail, and uh, any kind of referral. So splitting out your budget in between those. But it all depends on your revenue goals your revenue targets, your monthly revenue targets. And so it kind of helps calculate that. I get a lot of that. People don't know how many leads they got. They don't know how many they converted. They don't know how much their marketing spend should be. And this kind of helps. At least it's a, a guide. All right, moving on. Okay. <laughs> Why now? So, oops, let me go back one up. Let me just give you a little bit of uh, who I am. So I've been in this space for over two decades. I am the... I grew up in the military, moved every two years of my life, still in moving. I have moved, uh, I am your target audience. <laughs> I've done military moves, corporate moves, personal moves, neighbor moves, you know, you name the move, I've done the move. And 
just part of the life that I grew up in. I was a DOD logistician, so I was also part of inventory management. I helped bring um, move whole containers back from the Gulf War. That was part of my job was building out an entire database, tracking uh, uh, equipment coming back, back into the States. Since then, I got into digital marketing uh, development, and uh, I've done all kinds of mentoring. I've been the president of the Houston Interactive Marketing Association, and I have worked with people across the country. I can see even overseas into Germany, different companies um, doing different things. I've just been focusing on moving companies for the past three years, helping companies like Blue Ox Moving here in Houston, Summit, B2B in Ohio. There's a whole slew of them, and good people. I just... I, I just like you all. You're good people. You work hard and I just, I have an affinity toward it. So <laughs> uh, why now? I think why now with AI coming into place and we're all living in this world of technology, especially since the pandemic, it's just been this complete strive and what can I do to automate and get back my time? AI, of course, is jumping into the bandwagon. I just had a team meeting today, an all-hands team meeting, and part of that was how are we going to leverage AI more so than we do now. So some of what we'll talk about is a little AI. Most of it is just plain and simple automating your marketing. Now, since the two of you are here, David, Ryan, you don't have to answer. David, no. what are you currently doing? What are some things you're doing now for automations? Do you know? Well, so when we have a form submitted from our website, it goes mm -hmm. to our uh, marketing or uh, SEO company. Uh, they have a nice portal that tracks all of our leads. And then we have a uh, plug in our website, WordPress website that uh, pushes it into our CRM. Perfect. That's a great example. And that's one of the things we'll talk about. All right. So operational, there's a kind of difference between an operational and a marketing CRM. Operational is smart moving. These all have a lot of those automations in there. An estimate comes in and help you calculate. It'll help you, I'm sure, organize the trucks, organize the men, um, sending out feedback reminders, follow-up systems. Those are great operational, but these typically happened after you've basically got the lead. And so moving CRM, move Gistics, move point, move pro. I'm more familiar with smart moving because they have a really great API tool, the tool that helps me talk to it. Mm -hmm. And so I tend to promote them a little bit more. I move it pro is somewhat new. I've just got two new clients that use move it pro. I'm just now getting into it. It's all about whether or not they've got a decent, what they call an API, um, mm -hmm. a documentation that allows me to connect and it gives me information how I can connect. We now use, we use HubSpot. Of well. spot. There you go. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference. So you've got your operational and the marketing one, which is HubSpot moving up as our own personal one. It's based off of go high level active mm -hmm. campaign, Salesforce. These are all marketing CRMs and they kind of, they kind of work together. One, one can't, in my mind, one can't work without the other. These, these are not, in my opinion, not the kind of tools to manage a moving company. I think there's just way more that goes along with that than than a HubSpot app can do. I'm sure there's some custom, you can build out custom fields just like the moving up. I can build out whole campaigns, but you still need that operational CRM to do it the right way. Um, so that's kind of, we just figure out ways of connecting these two together to be able to get work done automatically and faster. So the other is the Zapier. If I can't get an API, then we'll use yep. Zapier or if then IFTTT using the APIs. And David, you sound like you're familiar with it, but for those of you that haven't heard or understand how that works, you've got an application and there's a request to response portion, and then it goes back to an API, another piece of software, and it's got to talk to it. It's got to call back. So the user uses the website and it's got to be able to go back and forth between the do the two. Those are APIs and they call back and forth to each other. Web, webhook is one, API is another. I have a uh, information technology background with the uh, there you go programming. There you go. So who? So you know who am I talking to here? You, you want to? <laughs> All right. Uncon so one of the biggest issues that we have, and one of the one things that uh, automation can help is called is helping with those unconverted leads. That's in my opinion one of the biggest issues, and that's how automation can help with that. We've got leads coming from all different places. We got phone calls, we got forms, we got chats, we got a DM from a social media. How can we collect all this intelligently 
and track everybody and respond in a manner that they feel like, okay, I've reached out. I know that they're, they're going to help me. So just a little bit of the stats. And I got some stats from smart moving 50, 60% of leads go unconverted. And that's shocking to me. Um, in my opinion, I, I thought it would be a little less, but 50, 60% it kind of makes sense now. I see a lot of times forms get filled out and I know personal experience. My clients tell me they call them back. They don't pick up the phone. And I don't know what y'all's experience has been. The phone number is usually the best method to convert because you got them on the phone right there. And then well, I just uh, did a screenshot of that for my sales meeting on Thursday. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Smart moving has an average conversion rate of 33%. To book jobs. Now, what I don't know is what are those 33%? Is that all leads or is that qualified leads? Because I kind of break them down into two, which means 67 go unconverted or lost. Um, people, I can see we track calls from paid ads. And when someone calls, I can see the call came through, but the voicemail picks up and they don't want to do that. And they, leave, they hang up. Right. I get it. Some of them are you know, spam or sales guys, but how many aren't? And common reasons for an unconverted leads, definitely a slow, whoops, where'd I go? Slow follow-up. Um, I would say if you get a phone call, try and pick up the phone within two to three rings. Try not to ever let it go to voicemail. But again, that's depending if you've got somebody right there picking up the phone all the time. I Some moving companies, it's a, husband, wife team, the wife is the one doing the sales. She gets busy. It goes straight to voicemail. I just, I don't think that's the right way if you want to grow a moving company. Mm -hmm. uh, lack of persistence is and constant follow-up. If you have a salesperson, it makes it a little easier. If you don't, what do you do to replace that persistence of that new lead? If somebody calls, we can have an automatic SMS callback that says, hey, we missed your call. Um, you can either say, we'll call you back in a minute or set up a virtual estimate and let them schedule time with you. I've seen those have been really good because it could be 10 o'clock at night that they're calling. We don't know. The other is a, an issue of customer communication preference, phone calls, social media DMs, emails, texting. We've got, and we experience that ourselves internally. Everyone's got their own way of communicating how do we put that all together and how do we follow up with them? Then the then definitely importance of the speed to lead. Following up within 15 minutes or less, I, less is preferred. Mm -hmm. Anytime a foreign comes in, you, you got to call them within God, three to four minutes because they've already moved on if they filled out that form. Again, if they do it 10 o'clock at night, Sunday, Sunday on an afternoon, unless you've hired a call center picking up the phone. Uh, how do we how do we make sure that everybody that has their own way of communicating is communicated with and the need for five to seven to follow up? So one thing I see lacking is the persistence of the follow up. Somebody fills out a form and let me I'll let me keep going here. Now, this is one of our case studies. These are just numbers. We have a client that had 363 leads one month. 326 were qualified. 89, meaning 89% were qualified. And then 42% of those qualified booked, meaning 37%, all of them booked. And that was through a series of follow-up emails, confirmation emails, SMS text responses, um, you know, quick response to phone calls and forms, all of that combined helps with that percent. And it just, it gets better and better. When one of our clients says he's got an absolute goal that you have to pick up the ring within two, two rings, everybody who's ever there, you got two rings and he tracks it. I don't know how he tracks it, but he's most likely he's in the office right there. So, all right. What is our ideal like outcome when it comes to automation? I want speed to lead. I want people to, as soon as that lead comes through, pick up the phone, get them the answer as quickly as possible. Cause we all know they got two other moving companies that they're calling pretty quickly if they haven't already filled out that form. Persistent follow-ups, simplify the conversion. I don't want you guys sitting at your desk all the time, sending emails and follow-ups and picking up the phone every two minutes. You know, there's gotta be a simpler way to convert these folks. Stop abandoned forms. I hate it when I fill out a form 
and it doesn't go anywhere. It just says, thanks. I don't get an email receipt. I get no follow-ups after that. It just goes off into the ether and I guess somebody got it. So that's an uncomfortable feeling for somebody. Get your time back. If you are a solopreneur, if you've got a small team, how can you get your team to work on things other than these small, tedious tasks? And then also, how can we serve your customers better? How can we give them the feeling that you are the chosen moving company, that you have experience in this, that you're going to handhold them through this process as much as possible? What are some ways that we can do that so that they know they've made the right choice, even after you've booked them? This is one of those areas of a customer journey. You don't know. They may have signed the contract, given you deposit. That might change their mind. They might find out that they don't trust you because we never heard from you. You don't communicate with me. Some this other moving company called me. They were on top of things. How can we serve your clients better consistently? So now I'm just going to go into examples now. That's pretty much the rest of the present. I'm just going to share with you what I've done for my clients. See if you can apply to it. Now, one thing is visitor tracking. I talked about people having to see your brand more than seven times before they actually call. I say 10 to 15, probably 15 is more like it. How can we make sure they see those eyeballs automatically? One way is for paid ads, the retargeting, right? Then if they go to your site, we have an automatic postcard gets sent back to them automatically. So if they have an address that I can track and they are with, they visited a certain number of pages and automatic postcards get sent back. So we've had an ad, a website, a postcard, and now we probably start seeing visual ads on other sites. So that's four. They might get maybe a direct mail from you, but it all starts adding up as we keep going. And now we've got a visual ad because they've been to the site. Now we are retargeting them. So retargeting is one of the best automation tools we can put into place when it comes to getting your brand out there. Uh, that can follow up with Facebook ads as well. We can have pixels on there. If you do Facebook ads, they start seeing your ads because now we know you've been to the site, you've interacted with the brand. What can we do? So visitor tracking is huge. If you haven't done something like that, try and do that now. Try and put a tracking number for your phone, tracking number for analytics, tracking numbers for Facebook. Even if you aren't doing Facebook ads, you can get a pixel on there. And at some point, you can maybe start doing that and build a list. All right. The next is following up. I mentioned forms. I, like I said, I hate it when I fill out a form and it just pops up a message. Thank you. What I want, and this is what we do for our clients, is the thank you page with a video that says, we're excited to talk to you. Give us a couple minutes, we're gonna respond. Here's what to expect during our call and immediately put them in the drip campaign. Immediately tag that person because they filled out the form, send them the first email as a receipt. Hey, we got your email and uh, you should be hearing from us within 10 minutes would be best. <laughs> of course, you put whatever you want in there. Here's what to expect. The same thank you content will be on the email. It's a receipt. We're, we're acknowledging the email. Wait a couple of days. Send them a helpful email about your move. Here's what to expect. Here's what we recommend for your move. If you're an apartment, here's the things you want to do. If this is a house, here are the things you want to do. Is this a commercial? And now, again, when you fill out that form, they're typically putting in residential, commercial, apartment, condo, whatever. You can segment that. So if they put in commercial, let them get the commercial emails. Make sure you, you know, unhook everything. Make sure you've wired up your, you know, you've labeled all of your wires, you know, whatever it is for a commercial site, right? Apartment. Hey, if you're apartment, then make sure you've spoken to the apartment manager. Make sure you reserve the elevator. All those things that go along with each of them. Don't just, you can send a general email, but then start segmenting them. Automatically, this happens on day one, day four day six, and just build that relationship with them automatically. Follow up, at, you can do confirming date and times. This is something that smart moving can do, but I think, uh, so some of the CRMs will do a little bit more. And that is like, um, you can, as soon as somebody books a move, you can put a date in, 
put them in the opportunity section that says booked move, that kicks them off another automation. Now we have the date of the booked move and, bef and you can have some email set up before the day of. You can have uh, text messages sent the day before. Don't forget, tomorrow we are uh, scheduled for your move. We're looking forward to it. Expect Joe and Sam, our driver. You know, this is what you should look for. You can get as, as complicated as you want, but the more information you give, the more the better that homeowner feels that you're on top of things. Prepare them for the move. Have you done these three things before we arrive, you know, have you organized your essential kit so that we don't pack that into the, you know, do your kids have their favorite toys in their own box? Have you labeled that? Just kind of give them those kind of details. That's all happens automatically. Nobody has to sit there and, and click send, find the email, send the email. It's all done automatically. Uh, I would say another email drip campaign that can be done automatically is final reminders. After the move, and there's a two-step, after the move, congratulations. Let us know if you have any questions. Again, we kind of want to be upfront about any issues. If there's been damage, give them instructions. I'm sure you'll do that as you hand off paperwork. If you have problems, here's that, but follow up with an email. Another email is a review card, a review. Please leave us a review and just continue on. The cool thing is you can set it so that one year later, and HubSpot will do this too, anniversary email. Hey, happy anniversary. I hope you've had a great year because now we're talking about either it's an apartment or friends and family. Refer us, we'll give you $100. You get 100 and we'll take 100 off for your friend. You know, just continuing the relationship, especially if it's an apartment. You know, these guys are annual leases, every two year leases, stay on top of them. And then obviously the requesting feedback, like, like I mentioned, that might even be a separate automation where if you send an email and they don't click send an email, um, they'll, they'll stay in the drip. If they do click it and I get a response that they did leave a review, I'll stop. I won't bug them. And there's just, you know, I don't know about you, but I, I had to go to the doctor the other day. I think I got about three or four reminders to leave a review on my text message. Why can't movers do that? So after a while, it got a little old. Like, all right, stop emailing these things. There's, there's a point. Now, definitely confirming receipts is another automation tool. Estimate request receipts, follow-up estimate requests, confirming your date and time. I think I already went through all this. But this is, this is on our system called the Moving Up app. Each client gets this. Uh, we have opportunities. A new lead, a qualified lead, contacted. And depending on the where they're at, I have automations in place. So if it's qualified lead internally, it will send a notification. This is a qualified lead. Make sure that you respond. We have one estimate sent. If it's a one star, it means that it's an internal automation that could be adds a tag. It could be uh, a booked date that gets added. Move scheduled is another internal automation of uh, more notifications and tags, dates get added. Move completed, that could be something that once you move this Diana Lewis over into move completed, that kicks off an entire series of emails that go on. Again, going into an if else situation, you know, was it a good review, a bad review? Does she have a claim? That's a whole other automation too. You could have a claim Somebody fills out a claim form, it goes into an automation, confirming the claim. Then we have move them into the claim received. That email can go back out and say, we got your confirmation. We're looking into it. We're investigating. You'll hear from us soon. And then obviously policies of what a claims, what they're allowed based on the contract. Final is thank you, whatever those emails. And again, that could be an if else we denied the claim or yes, we're sending you money, whichever way you want to work. But all of those are operational. I'm not sure if Smart Moving does that. I have a couple of clients that have a completely separate claim source, a third party that manages it. I have one company that used that automation specifically like with a specific claim form and it keeps, keeps track of it for them. Now, one of the things about preventing abandoned form requests is you fill out a form, like you were saying, David, 
fills out a form, it goes in the operational, and then it goes in the HubSpot. That's exactly what this is. Mm -hmm. But what they want is making sure they get a receipt and they're in that sequence. Yep. Just autoresponder is what you're talking about. Autoresponder to you as well as to them. Mm -hmm. It just it, it it gives them that feeling that okay they're on top of things. So I want to know that they got it. I want somebody notified of it. Of course, it goes straight into what we do with smart moving, we don't want to miss that. But I also want a notification to maybe sales, a notification back to the customer. And then they're immediately in doing a, a sequence of helpful sequence. The other problem I have with some of the automations, smart moving is one of my problems of getting data out. And one of the things I want to do is automate the process, which I, I figured out. I can't get data out with smart moving. I can get data into smart moving. I can't get data out. They only connect with MailChimp. So we have an API that goes straight into smart moving. When the mover moves that person into a booked move, I have that connected to MailChimp. For some reason, that's the only tool they'll connect out. I don't know why. So from MailChimp, I have a Zapier that sends it back to my CRM based on smart moving tags, booked, opportunity, um, whatever those statuses are. So that's where I'm able to kind of full circle. A little bit of a jerry-rigging, but I got it to work. But again, all automated. Nobody touches it. And in addition to the fact it automatically segments people, I now know who came in, who qualified, and now I can figure out who booked. So I run into an issue when folks don't have a CRM and it's all in like a database or it's in their email, which if anybody watching right now is using a spreadsheet or their email, stop it now, get yourself some kind of CRM. That's not a way to manage a moving company. You need some kind of tool to help you organize all this. I don't care if it's just smart moving or what, but something's got to be done. You can't do this stuff and run a business with your email or a spreadsheet, just, it doesn't work. Anyway, business, that's for sure. I'm sorry. To grow your business if you can't have access yeah. to customer data easily. Yeah, because you, you have to know how many came in, how yeah. many did you convert, how many did you book? Uh, and I think having those numbers all comes from you building out a system similar to this. Another automation is live chat, which some folks are, I don't see live chat being used properly. Live chat isn't a link to a form estimate. Like if I go to a live chat and it says, hey, we're here to help. And I click, I'm interested in a move and it just sends me to form. I don't, I don't if, then just don't have the chat. You could have a bot, which what we're investigating now is how do I have a bot answer those questions? It gets a little bit more, that's like a 2025, 2026 thing. I know there are some companies out there, I think movebot.ai, don't, don't look, I don't think that's correct, but they have a way, and I'm looking into this as well, training the bot based on criteria, where are you moving from, where are you moving to, right? Getting at least the basic data. And if it can answer a question, they may not be looking for an estimate, but if we can answer questions about do you move here? Do you move a shed? Can you move my piano? Will you do labor only? Those kinds of pretty simple questions we can put into a bot chat. Those are really great future automated systems that can be built. You can train the bot. Uh, and in the future, I'd like to see something like this. Like, you know, I, I'm looking for a local mover for my move next month. How much will it cost? And it just goes down through a series of questions to get an answer. That 100% can be done. It's just making sure the answer, you've trained the bot correctly. Sorry? There's only five pieces of information that you need to know. Right, exactly. So if you can use that, calculate it. Well, I think for me, the the, the calculation of distance, mm -hmm. you know, if it's cross town, down the street, or to a different state, what I, I would assume is what makes a big difference. Now, the thing about this is then it gets automatically added into another automation called the chat bot has started. And anytime there's a response, usually when we ask our clients, do you want a chat on there? We have that criteria. If you're going to have a chat, a real live chat, make sure somebody is there. If you don't want a real live chat, then you're going to have to have a system in place so that somebody responds pretty quickly. We can send it to a SMS as a text. Joe is asking for help via chat. 
and you can get notified and maybe go to your desk. So there's ways we can do this. I personally feel like don't have a chat if nobody's there answering the chat, unless you have a really good bot. So be on that. So uh, a feature and uh, we respond to it all day long and we use it for many things. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an autoresponder basically saying we're closed at night, but we might look at it and get back with you. Yeah, I think that's the best way. If, if you don't have it, then don't put it on there. I just see too many websites with a chat and it goes, but would you like an estimate? Oh, here's our form. Oh, well, I could have figured that out. What do I need? You? <laughs> Your form's right there. So I just think it's uh, unnecessary. Uh, another automation idea is quick SMS missed call. So if somebody calls, maybe leaves a message, calls, hangs up, you can have an instantaneous SMS back. Uh, looks like we missed your call. Can we help you answer any questions about your move? Yes, I'd like to speak to somebody. Feel free to book an appointment or we can call you back. Click here to set an appointment. You can have a, a what we call a trigger link. If they click a link and we've set it up as a trigger, it can set up another set of automations of this person has gone to the appointment page. You'll get notified if they schedule a virtual or a phone call time. Uh, I I think those are great for weekends and evenings. If you've got nobody there to answer the call, if it's seven o'clock on a Saturday night, let's schedule a time. And, and again, you're capturing them at that moment. I think uh, one of our clients here in Houston, that's what he does. He's got three salespeople. We have three calendars. They sync up to their calendar. Somebody schedules time. It goes right into their calendar and syncs. We've got it scheduled so that they only do virtual appointments on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Some of them are Wednesdays and Fridays, but the entire week is done. All automated reminders get sent out. So for example, this webinar, everyone got an email reminder, a text reminder. Don't forget your appointment tomorrow. And again, another round of helpful, here's what to expect. Here's the questions we're going to ask so that they're ready for that call. And again, I was talking about the bot. So the tool we have, again, it's, it's the moving up app, but it is based on go high level. So Google go high level, and you'll see what we're building out and how we're doing it. Uh, this is conversational AI. It can be done through a bot chat tool. Uh, I'm looking at SMS as well. So if somebody texts you, same same exact bot. Uh, that's, again, we have to train it more through web URLs, public links, and then definitely a question answer pair. So we have to provide it as many questions and relative answers to get that to work. But you can have autopilot mode, Maximum responses, a message, maximum messages a bot can send to a contact. You don't want an endless loop and kind of monitoring it because we're not perfect yet. It'll, I've seen some weird answers. <laughs> so another automation people forget about is asking for feedback, asking for reviews. We all know Google reviews are really, really important. We all strive for those reviews. How can I make sure that I get as many reviews as possible and give the client as many opportunities, the, the customers, many opportunities to do that without being overly, but then be overly. One is what we do, we have review cards, review business cards with the QR code that immediately, again, a trigger link, immediately kicks them off into a review feedback loop. Smart Moving does that. When you send out an invoice, it asks for a review. But I say, do it along the way. As soon as they move in, give them a card or a postcard, a bigger postcard. QR code sends them straight to the Google review right then and there. Because most, 100%, they're using their phone when they do that QR code. It'll instantly send them to Google. They're most likely already logged in. Do that. The postcard can give them more instructions. Here's our driver, John. And Sam were our drivers. If you mention their names, they're in a raffle for the month. Best driver of the month or best mover of the month. So a postcard kind of just kind of gives them a little bit of a, hey, we're trying to give back to our drivers and our movers. Here's how we do that. We, we really want to review from you. Give them instructions, QR code, boom. Now they're into an automatic loop. We can track it if they've clicked that or they've left a review the automation stops. If they haven't, come up with quirky, fun ways, an email, an SMS, uh, another email. And again, over time, obviously, we're not you know, spamming them. 
Uh, so, and in addition, what I like is the QR code. It gives me information. How many people actually use that QR code? Is it even working? So we can get real good data on how many per day, per month, how many people use that QR code. That QR code we use for other things. If you have any, side note, if you have any direct mail, I would absolutely use your QR code and a tracking number on direct mail. People are always asking me, I don't know if it's working. Sometimes people tell me they get the same postcard four or five times. So two things, track the number, put a QR number on just for direct mail. Don't only do it one time. If you send a postcard, follow it up with a letter and a third item, letter, postcard, I don't care what it is, but one postcard isn't gonna do much. If we do them into the automation, the remarketing, that could be a second postcard that gets sent out. But the whole point of this is automating that reviews. We're not manually sending somebody an email, oh, please leave us a review. And we're not waiting for, um, we're not waiting. We're also stopping it when they do get the reviews. So we're not bugging them too much. All right, now, pretty much that's it. There's other ideas, but I just didn't wanna to go too in depth on this. What? Ryan, David, where do you guys think you, what you're looking at right now as to what you think we can do or you can do? Well, we're definitely looking at more automation mm -hmm. and for the better follow-up as well. Uh, I, I was really tuning into that. I When I talk to groups, I give a uh, uh, talk about the power of follow-up. And I was totally hanging on every word that you said. You know, if you don't call in five minutes, you know, if you call in five minutes, you get 95% chance of getting the job. If you call mm -hmm. in 50, it goes down to 60. Uh, it may take 10 times to get a hold of the lead, things like that. Right. We're getting people motivated to do it. And then I did also like your uh, top down automation plan. You know, uh, you can't get a hold of them, make sure they get a text right away. Uh, and then, you know, we really want to talk to you. Uh, and then I, remarketing, I used to do that and I've forgotten about that, but that I think that's a highly effective uh, a tool and I get remarketed all the time when I'm an online shopper. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's important as well. Um, I liked what you said about not being able to get data out of smart moving because that's probably very true. You know, how do you get useful reports and know uh, that your, uh, you know, the dollars you're spending are, you know, you got a good ROI on your investment into marketing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, does does yeah. HubSpot do that? Can what kind of how is the automation working? With I just haven't used HubSpot in a long, long, long time. I only use HubSpot to keep my website honest because if somebody ah. hits the button, uh, sometimes you know we found that WordPress won't send us the email and we've yeah. missed the lead. Yeah. So uh, I get an email notification from HubSpot. I go back and double check that against our uh, email box that we get new leads to and make sure we got the lead. Right. Uh, and then I'll also go look in the CRM to make sure that it ended up there through the API as well. Right, right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, we have the same problem. We use a tool called Postmark, which is a premium tool, but it ensures that the email at least went, if they don't have a CRM, mm -hmm. you know, so it, it tracks it. So if someone says all of a sudden we're not getting our emails, we're able to go in and look, oh, whatever reason you didn't get this email blocked, junk mail, but you got it. But yeah, it's a good tracking tool, so that's good. So, so are so you so you have a, a deep knowledge and uh, depth of what what is happening and what needs to happen. And is uh, is your product a CRM? Is that what your uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah? Uh, it does. Um, so obviously, the automation, the opportunities, you're able to put people through pipelines, which I think HubSpot has. Email marketing for sure. Text marketing, mass text marketing. Uh, it can build out QR codes. Uh, it's got uh, social media management. So I'm able to send it to, you know, one post, but it'll also customize it. It's got uh, funnels. So if we do paid ads, we'll do a funnel and we track it. We, we test it. Is the website better or is our funnel better? So we, we kind of do both, but it's got you a funnel a management portal that uh, consolidates uh, Google analytics, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the lead portal possibly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And, so uh, we track it. So if people come through, I know where they came from a paid ad, uh, a local search, a direct, if they typed it in the domain, a direct. It, so we are able to see how that person came in. And are, so you know, HubSpot does a really nice deep dive on every lead that comes in. You can see all nice. the web data and mm -hmm. uh, 
you you know what their whole lead journey was from the moment they entered their usually when they entered their whatever their search term was mm -hmm. and how they got there and where they looked at what where they went on your site and what they saw. Nice. So that's pretty cool stuff that you can. Know. Does it have Google ad tracking, like phone tracking though? Can you, can so, you get phone calls? So that is that once uh, when, so we have uh, the Google tracking number on our uh, site that points to our phone system, which has a, a you know, like a, 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 a mailbox or not a mailbox, but a phone uh, number set up so that it, so it displays on our phone and in our phone log uh, that we, that was a Google ads call. Okay. So it's it's in there now. We have a we do have a you know SEO company that gives us the nice portal too, and there there's a several of them out there. Of course, you know that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we're a dime a dozen. <laughs> we do local, long distance, and international moving. We do local residential. Uh, we okay. do uh, you know some other lines of business that we have to uh, have uh, custom forms for, mm -hmm. work processes for, and forms outputted forms for as well mm -hmm. uh, uh, what's your capability with those i'm sorry with the forms yeah, with, uh, the ability to you know generate bills like local bill of lading long distance bill of lading tariff integration mm -hmm. oh gosh no we're purely marketing that i rely on like the operational crms like the smart moving and the move it pros those guys yeah between my website and my op my operational crm mm-hmm and you, you can, can you API in and out mm -hmm. of your software? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. Now we're experts in WordPress. Like we build, that's all we build at WordPress. So we know the API in and out. Um, and then in, in addition to our system, their API as well. So what, what is your, uh, what's your cost to uh, develop an average moving company website? Uh, just the website is we start at 4,500. And but it's purely optimized. Like we, we spend a lot of time on the content and the build structure. So the, you know, the URLs are correct. We've got, I've got a whole system in place for that, but we start at 4,500. Do, uh, so, uh, do you uh, hold yourself fancy as a SEO uh, uh, mm -hmm. optim optimizer? Yep. Absolutely. Yep. We do the full research. Performance is another thing. Uh, I'm always looking at how fast the sites, as well as the mobile version. People often forget, you know, almost 75% of all moving company customers, it's the mobile version of the site. Well, yeah, they mobile, rarely go to the desktop. Days. So. We're on a desktop, but mo mobile is definitely the, the place to be for sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So things like having the phone number at the bottom all the time, like it's just a button that just sits there. Call yeah. now. Always. Your menu of services that your company offers. We offer website design, paid ad, SEO, and obviously the automation. We build that all in. We've got some tools that we give people to kind of help engage, like our ultimate moving checklist. I'm preparing one for apartments. You know, I'm gathering another feature I'm trying to add is uh, reaching out to apartment complexes so that you can, uh, especially on the down you know, during the winter season, kind of pick it up on the apartments. Uh, obviously, April kind of kicks in. We work, we work with um, homes, residential, commercial, uh, not stopping during the, during the winter. The other, what else? Yeah, analysis, ROI, tracking, social media. I'm not a social media company. We will do your social media in terms of we, we, are, we are building the brand through content. So we write a couple blogs a month and we share it on different platforms just to drive traffic back and for SEO purposes. So people are like, oh, I'll never post on X. Well, your audience might be on X, <laughs> you know, and it's also, it's a good backlink. Uh, so. On your uh, platform that you can link to Facebook, Instagram, mm -hmm. yep. uh, your Twitter, link, TikTok, YouTube, and Pinterest maybe. So I'm sorry. In interest, so you can so you can connect and schedule blog posts, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, uh, social media posts. Mm -hmm. right? okay. Take reviews. Yeah, it'll actually give you um, access to your reviews, so you can respond within the app. You'll get notified. Okay. Uh, so again, I was telling you about the tracking of the reviews. That's how I'm able to stop a review because I can tell something came in and the the request stop. Uh, but yeah, it's even. Uh, 
it's even got an AI associated with it. So if you get a review, you can use the AI to get a good response. You don't have to think about it, which I, we, and I'll, honestly, we use that all the time. There's a special AI bot that we plug in the data. It gives us a really good response. And it's just experience with that too. We have, we have over a thousand Google yeah. reviews in our company. So yeah. uh, that's all, amazing. That. Good for uh, you. Is your, is your uh, CRM a cloud or your marketing CRM a cloud-based product? Yes, cloud. Oh, yeah. What do you mean? Cloud-based for sure. sure. Okay, it's not a desktop application. Oh, no, no, no. Pure cloud. Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> Does anybody do that anymore? Is anybody doing desktop only? Do you get a floppy disk or something? I don't software anymore. Um what's the uh so is it is it a cost per user is it how, how are you how do you price your system for the crm uh it's just part of our package uh we've got a couple clients that decided to take it off on their own but they're still on our crm and they're about 250 a month so it's it's similar to the hubspot price although hubspot's even more now aren't they up to a thousand a month it depends <laughs> Yeah. But see, the thing is, is that uh, depending on how many emails you send out. So we have an email marketing. So we recommend at least once a month that you send out the annual anniversary stuff, apartments, apartment complex owners, that kind of stuff is having a regular email. So having said that, when you get to the point where you're like a massive email list, we have to kind of bill you for uh, uh, checking and, author and authenticating the emails right, so that we don't get blocked as a spammer right so, and good uh so uh i guess we would have about twenty five thousand email yeah. address, you know in our yeah. for starters yeah oh, i gotta get you on my podcast because i have way more questions for you <laughs> <laughs> because uh you're quite knowledgeable so i'm curious to know what your thoughts are especially no i've not worked with anyone that does international mostly national locals and even that na even national long distance is still Somewhat rare, unless you're a broker. So interested in how many locations do you have? We just we just have one location. We have two brands. We actually okay. three brands in one location here in Sterling, Virginia. Oh, cool. I do have moving company franchise. Uh, I've been a moving company franchisor before in my, mm -hmm. uh, my previous life. Mm -hmm. We had seven locations at that time. Oh, nice. And that was before you actually had any technology. Ah. And... Did you, did you sell it because you, it was just the right thing to do time to start over or did, is it just. Yeah. You know, I've, I've been through a, a number of iterations of moving companies in my life. I started as a, a mover in 1978 in Toledo, Ohio as a piano mover. Uh, and then I uh, it, it struck out on my own in 1983 uh, when I was 23 years old. And it soon became apparent that I was a much better mover than a business person. Uh -huh. so, after about three years, we stopped being in business and I went to work for a real moving company and became the vice president of sales uh, and uh, at, at a Polar Urban agent in Toledo, Ohio. And I learned uh, about the tariff when it was still on paper. Mm -hmm. So I would go out and do, uh, you know, handwritten interstate estimates you mm -hmm. know, and such and mm -hmm. you know, sell, sell moving jobs. Uh, then back out on my own again uh, and uh, moved from Toledo to Northern Virginia in 1989. I started a fairly popular moving company here that I ran until 2011, sold it. And uh, when the uh, uh, non-comp expired, I bought a round town movers, which has a whole story in and of itself. And uh, we've been here ever since. Wow. What a story. Yeah, I got to interview you more if you don't mind. I would love to talk to you more about this a wealth of information. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Forever, but uh... now I just remember the bill of ladings. I mean, when we were doing stuff from the Defense Department, I had a typewriter yeah. <laughs> and a book. And I wrote my the database was the book with lines. <laughs> and I was entering it in this new thing called Access, you know, this new computer called access for you to take My first database was lotus approach yeah lotus yeah. right lotus smart suite so that was we used that for 15 or 20 years uh and i you know put together a very rudimentary fundamental crm system but we could go in and look up the names of the customers mm -hmm. assign order number we could print their bill of lading we could do their uh, re order reconciliation in there and mm -hmm. uh it was an effective little tool for no money a month yeah sure 
Absolutely. Well, awesome. Thank you so much, David. You too, Ryan. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, if you guys need any help, more than questions, feel free to call, schedule some time. Happy to have another conversation, Dave. I would love to get you on my podcast and talk to you more about your history. That's a lengthy one there. You got yeah. all kinds of wealth of information that others might be helpful to. So is there a way to uh, uh, look at your platform, like a demo or? Uh, yeah, I usually just reserve it just for our clients, but I'm happy to, if you want to schedule some time, I'll show it to you. Happy to do that. Right, yeah. Let's well, just see that. I, so Ryan's, it's my partner in crime uh, on okay. the other line there. Uh, so sure. we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk about this and yeah. do thank you for your time. I think yeah, you're you too. very, you know, experienced, uh, and knowledgeable person, uh, in this and, and you've broken, uh, I have great admiration for how you've broken down the steps and processes, uh, into doable doses and, uh, you know, make it understandable. I uh, hope so. Yeah. Not uh, everybody is tech savvy as you are, David. So, you know, we got to do that. <laughs> awesome. Well, appreciate your time, everyone. Thank you so much. And, you know, hop, hop on YouTube. I'm on there too. If you ever want to say hi, but I will reach out David and we'll, I'll, I'll share with you what I've got in my, uh, Moving up that. Very pleasure right. meeting. Pleasure meeting you too. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. Drive safe. <laughs> Bye.